Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowback. Today we will do Unit 7, Lesson 5, called Tangents. And there's many definitions for the word tangent. Uh, perhaps one of your teachers goes off on a tangent sometimes in class and talks about things that aren't really relevant to the subject. Um, you might think about cosine, sine, and tangent. We just studied the trigonometric ratios, and tangent is one of those ratios, opposite over adjacent. Today, we're going to learn a third definition for tangent, which is a line that touches a circle in exactly one point. And you can see the red line over on the right over here. You can see line AB. Line AB is a tangent to circle C. It touches the circle in exactly one point. So let's write that down. A tangent is a line that intersects a circle in exactly one point. A line that intersects a circle in exactly one point. And an example of a tangent in this picture on the right is line AB. Remember when you name a line, you put the double arrows above it. And you can see the point of tangency, that's where the line actually touches the circle or intersects the circle. Um, so we can write that too, I guess. The point where a tangent intersects a circle. And an example in this case, the point of tangency is A. That is the point where the line intersects the circle. Sometimes you can have two circles and you can have a common tangent and you can see down below, uh, for instance, line L, this cursive uh, L here represents this red line. That line touches both circles in exactly one point. It touches circle G right here and circle F right here. So that's a common tangent to both circles. Same with line L on this other example, it touches both circles in exactly one point. Please take a minute and pause the video and you're going to try to draw in all common tangents to the circles. So for instance, in example A, draw in any lines that can touch both circles in exactly one point each. When you're done with A, B, and C, go ahead and unpause. So in example A, there should be two common tangents and I'm not using a straight edge so mine might be a little crooked but this line right here would touch this circle and this circle in exactly one point each. And then down below, there's a second line and it's a tangent to both circles as well. In example B, there should be four of them, four common tangents. So here's one, touches both circles. And then here's one coming down touches both circles, and then you get a crisscross. So for instance, if I start here, like this, it touches this circle here and this circle here. And then same with the other crisscross. And there we have it. There are four common tangents. And for part C, there should be one. One common tangent touches both circles right there. In a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. So if you see a picture like this where um, the radius, ST, is perpendicular to a line, that means that that line is only going to touch the circle in one point. It will be a tangent. So we could say L is tangent to circle S. In other words, L touches circle S in just one point, and I know that because the radius is perpendicular to that point. Why is that important? Well, in number two, it says, is KL a tangent to circle J? Well, if it is a tangent, this would be a 90 degree angle at, at L. So we have to determine is that a 90 degree angle? Well, think about radii. Radii are always the same length. And so if from J to L is eight, then 
This spot right here from J to the edge of the circle should also be 8. So the total length from J to K is 9 plus 8, or in other words, 17. So to check, what we can do is a little Pythagorean theorem. We can do 8 squared plus 15 squared, and we can see, does it equal 17 squared? If it does, then we have a right angle. So we have 64 plus 225, which is 289, and guess what? 17 squared is also 289. It balanced out, so that means it is a right angle, it is a right triangle, and therefore, yes, KL, so I'll just say yes, segment KL is a tangent. Because it means this would be perpendicular, which qualifies it as a tangent. Notice number three is written a little differently. The 12 goes all the way from the center of, center of the circle out to H. So on this one, we're checking for does six squared plus eight squared, does that equal the 12 squared? If it does, then angle G would be a 90 degree angle and it would be a tangent HG touching the circle. Well, six squared is 36, eight squared is 64. That adds up to 100 but 12 squared is 144. They are not congruent, and so therefore, no, GH, segment GH, is not tangent to the circle, or is not a tangent. Here's one that's a little harder. It says, find the value of x, assume that segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. What they're telling us is you can assume this is a 90 degree angle down at angle J. And so if that's a 90 degree angle, we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna take x squared plus 12 squared. And this time we know it should be equal to the third side, the hypotenuse, but what do we call that hypotenuse? Well, remember when we did eight plus nine to get 17 on example, the previous example? Uh, here, we're gonna add x plus eight to get that entire length. So we write it like this. We write it in a parenthesis and square outside of the parenthesis. x squared is x squared, 12 squared is 144, but you have to think about what do we do over here? Well, x plus eight squared is really x plus eight times x plus eight. And those are two binomials. So what we can do is either FOIL or box method over there. I usually like to do FOIL, which F stands for firsts, so I'm gonna take the first thing in each parenthesis and multiply those, and I'm gonna get X squared. Then I'm gonna do O, which stands for outsides, and outsides, remember, it's this X here and this eight here. Those are the outside things, so X times eight is eight X. Then I'm gonna do the insides, which is this eight and this X, that is multiplied, eight times X is eight X again. And then finally, the L stands for lasts, which is gonna be the last thing in each parenthesis, eight times eight, 64. So now we just have to do kind of regular algebra and see if we can solve this. I usually try to get um, my like terms together. So I see I have X squareds on both sides of the equal sign. So I thought, why don't I get those together? Well, something cool happens. They cancel out here, they also cancel out here. So we're left with 144 on the left side. Then we have 8x plus 8x, which is 16x plus 64. Subtract your 64. Subtract your 64 from both sides, and I think you get 80 equals 16x. Divide both sides by 16, x equals five. Have we finished? It says find the value of x. Yep, we did that, x was five. So going back to a little easier problem, will you please pause the video and on your own, go ahead and try part B. The way I set up part B is I just did a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared because this should be a 90 degree angle. 17 is across from your right angle, so that has to be your hypotenuse. 14 squared is 196, 17 squared is 289. Subtract your 196 from both sides. 
So you get x squared equals 93, and then you have to take the square root. This is not a nice number. It does not say we have to have an exact answer, so we can just go ahead and leave it as a decimal. I get 9.64, and there's no label there, so we can just leave it. Next, if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to a circle, then they are congruent. So in other words, if segment BA, if this comes up and touches the circle in one point, and then segment BC, same thing, touches the circle in one point, the distance from B to A and B to C will be the same. So segment BA will be congruent to segment BC if both of those segments are tangent to the circle. Number five. Segment AB and segment CB are tangent to the circle. Find the value of x. Well, what we just learned is these two should be congruent. So you just do x plus 15 equals 2x minus 5. So not too hard on this one, kind of regular algebra that you're used to. I wind up with 20 equals x, and then we have to look back, did we do everything that we needed to. It says find the value of x. So yes, we are done. Will you take a minute, pause the video, and try number six? Since rq and rs are both tangents, they should be congruent. So 3x plus 8 should equal the 26. Subtract 8 from both sides. One quick review of some vocab. We learned the words inscribed and circumscribed. Remember, uh, circumscribed means it's around the outside. So in this case right here, you can see there is a triangle circumscribed about a circle. Here there's a quadrilateral circumscribed. And when they're circumscribed, each of those sides of the triangle are tangent to the circle. Each of the sides of the quadrilateral are tangent to the quadrilateral. They all touch the circle in exactly one point. Um, so keep that in mind on the next problem. Number seven, quadrilateral RSTU is circumscribed about the circle. If the perimeter is 18 units, find X. So one of the things you need to know is if, if that quadrilateral, RSTU, is circumscribed about the circle, it touches the circle in exactly one point on each side. Which means, like from point S to point A, and from point S to point D, those are both tangents and they're starting from the same point, from S, which means they are the same length. So SD would have to be 3. Same thing over on the other corner. RD and RC are going to be tangents to the circle, and they're both starting from point R, so they would be the same length. So this from C to R is also 3. And then at the top, same idea. This distance and this distance, so we can call this X, and this distance and this distance are the same, so we can call that X. Take a second, pause the video, see if you can write an equation Remember, the perimeter is 18 of the quadrilateral, so see if you can write an equation to solve for x. Well, perimeter means the distance around the object, so think about the distance around. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, so if we add those together, and then if we add 3, 6, 9, 12, so 4x plus 12, all of that together should add up to the perimeter, which they told us was 18. So that's your equation. Add up all the distances around the outside of the shape. Subtract 12. You wind up with 4x equals 6. Divide by 4, and x is 1.5. Have we solved the equation, or have we answered the question? If the perimeter is 18, find x. Yep, we found x was 1.5 units. 
All right, last question. Again, I'm gonna, this one's a little a bit of a challenge, but I want you to try it first. So pause the video and see if you can find the measure of angle RTP. When you've tried it for a while, then unpause. So angle RTP is this tiny little sliver right in here. That's what we're trying to find, okay? So uh, let me erase that. Remember the radii of the circle? From P to S, is that a radius? Yes. From P to T, is that a radius? Yes. They both start at the center and go to the edge of the circle. They will be the same length because all radii in a circle are the same length. But what happens is that gives us an isosceles triangle right here. And in an isosceles triangle, if two sides are congruent, two angles will be congruent. So this angle also is 30 degrees. Now I want you to think about the 70, the 70 degree arc out here. Okay, this angle RTS opens up to this 70 degree arc. So that angle RTS should be half of 70. Well, 70 divided by two is 35. So that's gonna be 35 degrees. Now, remember what we're looking for is this little sliver. So what I would do is take the 35 and subtract the 30 and you should have the sliver left. So 35 minus 30, of course, is five degrees. And that is the measure of angle RT. P. Pretty cool. That wraps up Unit 7, Lesson 5. Will you please try the practice and let me know if you have any questions.